Hi, I'm David Lawrence, CEO and founder of the Mission Gate Foundation. In this video, we're going to be talking about selecting the correct knee, ankle, foot orthoses for your patient, or the KAFO. Most importantly off the bat, I want you to understand is that we are not concerned about brands here. We're really going to be talking about categories or types of braces, not a particular brand. We have no conflict of interest. There's no resources coming in from any company that is going to be selling a product. So all of our information is from our own experience as well as our own market research. From the beginning, you always want to consider both the diagnosis and the patient preference. When you're getting started, it's not just fitting a diagnosis. This patient's going to do great with this diagnosis, but you have to understand the patient and their own preference. So with every patient, I like to bring a good, better, and best option to them. That's three types of braces that are going to do the job they need. And the best may be the best. It's got all the bells and whistles. It'll do everything imaginable, but it may not be something the patient can utilize for a variety of reasons. It could be weight. It could be technology. It could be the strapping. Um, it could be that it's not going to be durable enough for the type of activities that they do. So sometimes a bulletproof good brace that is not all the bells and whistles, but has this, this ability to do the job and not break down could be the best option for the patient. This is what we have to determine as we go through this. Unfortunately, there are thousands of braces in closets all across this country because of poor brace selection and poor training. So we have to take the time to get the selection right and do the training the patients need to functionally utilize that device in real life. So with that in mind, what should you know? You should know the diagnosis, right? You should understand what's going on exactly. Does this patient have an upper motor neuron issue where they have an extensor pattern in their leg, an equina varus of the foot, a hyperextension of the knee? That's gonna be very different than someone who has a flaccid lower extremity that's gonna buckle or give out from under them and not have any stability to it. That diagnosis is gonna be important. But on top of that, you also have to understand the patient's interests. What do they want from this? Not what can the brace do, but what does the patient want to do with the brace? And activities, what activities are they gonna challenge it with? Are they gonna be down in the dirt and doing work and, and grinding on it? Or is this a brace that's gonna be in really nice shape a year or two later because it's not gonna get that kind of heavy use? What are the activities the patient wants to do? So the next concern is history or time in, patho in the pathologic cycle. How long has this person had the diagnosis and again, has that been a year? Has that been a month? Uh, how, long, how much time have they had to get used to what's going on and understand how that affects their life? If it's only been a month, they're still kind of shell-shocked and just trying to understand how their life is coming together. And you may have to take more time with them to really explain things to them and give them more input so they can understand the process and the process going forward. Then you also have to relate the fact that what is this diagnosis as far as getting worse, getting better, or staying about the same? And what that means is someone comes out of surgery, they need the most brace right now, but a month or two from now, they may need much less brace or no brace at all, so they can kind of stage out of the brace. Someone else, their diagnosis, unfortunately, may be that they are gonna be deteriorating. No matter what we do in therapy, the diagnosis is gonna deteriorate. So that brace may have to stage up we can still do a lot to improve function during that time period, but we can't change what's going to happen overall. And then the most common is the one in the middle where people have issues of uh, the diagnosis, but that's gonna stay fairly consistent. What we can do is improve their function with a, the right technology and with the right training. The next issue is really upcoming events, activities that you can use as motivators. A uh, number of patients have said to me they wanna walk their daughter down the aisle. So that's a big thing. I want to get up and be able to walk down the aisle. So great, we're going to use that as a motivator to advance you and move you along in this process. But at the same point, there you're going to understand that that skill is going to be used throughout the rest of your life as well. And then location is the next issue. Does your patient uh, live, say, within a mile of an orthotic facility, or are they 50 or 60 miles away? If they live out in an area, a rural area, on a farm, ranch area, they're working down in the dirt and the mud all the time. Again, the brace selection might be very different than someone that lives very close to where technology can be adapted and can be adjusted and can be repaired uh, and repaired easily. So with that being said, let's review some of the issues related to KFOs and some of the braces on the tables here behind me. KFOs in general are made of materials that are carbon, plastics, metals, um, Velcro, nylon, sometimes leather, but not that so much anymore. But those types of materials are what we're going to be talking about. And they really have two primary concerns, alignment, 
That means that device in the ML. That means medial to lateral valgus to varus, whether your knee bows out or, or buckles inward. Can we stabilize that with the brace? And then flip that to AP or anterior posterior. Does that knee hyperextend or does that knee buckle? Both of those things are really important to understand how are we stabilizing that knee and how are we aligning that knee. And then over top of that, what kind of ankle foot orthosis considerations do I have? How is that device working for me underneath? Articulated or non-articulated device and what it does for the patient. So let's start here with a very basic setup of an articulated ankle. That would work well with somebody who has a tone issue, a hyperextension issue, because it'll allow that ankle to bend and allow the weight to get over the top without forcing a hyperextension moment. If the patient needs stabilization, there are, are uh, support here and um, stabilization to the knee. These are drop locks that come down and lock that knee into position so that it won't bend. And then if I need to sit, I can push those, those drop locks up and that knee will bend. Re-extend and I have to bring those drop locks down or sometimes they can be made to drop into place and create stability. So this is made of plastic with metal uprights, no stabilization from alignment, I should say, from side to side too much with this. It's just controlling that foot so that it can move and stabilizing the knee and holding it in full extension. Now, from there, you can go down the line in a number of different braces. But if I go to much kind of more modern technology, all carbon fiber, much lighter than the brace I just had, and now we're looking at an ankle that is non-articulated. Right? So this does not articulate naturally. The nice thing about carbon fiber is though, this can be laid up quite thick to give you a lot of stability. That'll hold you up as you come over the front of the foot, a lot of stability at that knee, and that pushes the knee into extension. But if I have a patient with a hyperextension problem, this can be laid up much lighter so that there's more bend to the natural, naturally in the carbon fiber here, so allow you to get more over the top and not create such a hyperextension moment. If I'm looking at stabilization or alignment, I should say, we have pads on both sides and the brace comes up high on the front and back so that we're creating a good stabilization of that joint from side to side, alignment wise, and then front to back, I can lock that knee out full extension so it's not gonna bend at all on the patient. But there's also a device here where I can click this guy, push him all the way up and now that knee bends and I can have it bend. If I'm saying, okay, now I need my extension back, I can press the button on the side back to extension and that will lock out. So it gives me both worlds. I can have a locked joint and an unlocked joint, but I have to separate those things out one from the other and I can't have both in the middle of my gait cycle. So let's just look at a different system here where we say now we have also a knee joint system high sides and top to try to create some lateral alignment issues, side to side alignment, AP in the front so that I got good locking stability from the joint. But you'll notice that there's cables here that go down to ankle joints and a foot plate. So now based on where this foot plate is, if it's in a down position as I'm stepping down on that leg, that knee is gonna lock out. But as I come over the top, you can see that will bend. So again, the patient steps down on the leg, Foot goes into somewhat plantar flexion, knee locks. I bring that weight over the top into dorsiflexion, the knee will bend so they can take a step. So I kind of get the best of both worlds, but we are talking about moving parts, parts that don't always work exactly the way you'd like, need to stay adjusted and need to be kept in really good condition for that function to occur. And then the next level, you can go all the way up to something called the C-brace. And a brace like this, it has a microprocessor. So instead of just a mechanical locking or unlocking based on the foot position, there's a microprocessor system inside this unit that is gonna determine at a, what position that knee is gonna lock and stabilize and what position that knee is gonna unlock to take a step, very much like the C-leg in prosthetics. So that will give us stability, stabilization when we need it, and then the computer will determine, okay, now you're ready for mobility and taking a step. So the technology goes from lots of, from one end to the other as far as stabilization and how that works for the individual. And the difference is, one of the differences, not only the technology, but weight. The last brace I was holding, quite heavy. The lightest brace we had, very lightweight, all carbon fiber, about two, a little over two pounds. So we're talking weight and we're talking about moving parts. 
How do I want that ankle joint to work? How much knee stabilization do I need? How much knee mobility do I need? So with all that being said, a couple of suggestions. I always suggest, like I did from the beginning, select the device for the pathology and the patient preference. Select the right device or selecting the right device should be a team approach. It is really important to understand that this takes a lot of clinical decision making or decision processing um, with a KAFO. With an AFO, it's important to have a team involved and to get information, but with a KAFO or come up even higher, HKFO, that's a hip knee ankle, or a reciprocating device, an RGO, reciprocal gait orthoses. These are gonna take a lot of information, medical information, technological information, rehabilitation information, and of course, patient concerns. All of that information has to come together to ensure the best possible outcome for the patient. I implore you, take the time to really do the background, the research, some of the technology, that most of the technology that's on the tables behind me didn't really even exist five years ago. So there's been an explosion in the technology and orthotics, and there's a lot out there that wasn't out there very long ago. But if we do the right thing for the patient, take the time, really do the research, find the best system for them, we will get them the very best outcome. Thank you for watching, and we hope you found this helpful. This video is part of a series on orthotic rehabilitation, ranging from selecting the appropriate orthosis to comprehensive gait training with an orthotic. We encourage you to view our other videos in this series and to share them as well. You can find them on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash mission gate. Stay up to date on our latest content. Click the link in the corner to subscribe and be sure to like and share this video. Also, let us know what you think in the comments section below.